Welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 video and today, well today I want to talk about some methods what you could use in order to communicate between different actors. The first thing that we got to keep in mind is that we need to gain a reference to that specific unit because for example right here I have a very basic actor which only has a static mesh and that's a cube um, and if we have many of those in our level we need to get a reference to that one specific instance and there are quite a few ways how we can do that. So let's go, uh, well let let me open up this actor as you can see it's just a regular actor with a static mesh and that's basically all it has. Now I'm gonna go to my third person character and I have a keyboard key I event and I'm gonna show you the first way uh, how you could get the reference to a specific actor. So the first way would be whenever we spawn an actor from class so if we would spawn actor from class and then we can select that this is our in my case I call this new blueprint so that's the default name of it and let's spawn it next to ourselves so get actor uh, location so get actor location and I'm gonna just, just gonna spawn it right next to me so I'm gonna add like 100 units in the x-axis so it wouldn't be on top of me so whenever we spawn a new actor we get this return value which is essentially the reference to that specific instance so uh, I'm going to store that in the memory in the variables and I'm just gonna call this variable actor and I'm gonna make sure that the variable type in this case is also the actor you could specify a specific type by selecting the type to be new blueprint but in that case well in the actor you can only store that uh, that type of variables so they only can be one of these instances from the new blueprint if we are using just a actor type then that can essentially be any any actor that we want it to be so let's set it up so we want to set this value and we then just plug in the return value so now every time we spawn a new actor it's going to get remembered but only that last one now in order to communicate with this thing with this new blueprint I'm gonna go to, and well on the keyboard key O I'm going to cast to this new blueprint and this is the node that allows us to communicate with it. Now we need to provide the object reference and well since we are storing that one in the actor then we can use our actor variable and that is going to be our object reference. Now as this new blueprint we can do whatever we want, want basically whatever we want to do with it. So in my case what I'm going to do is get a static mesh because well that's the only thing this thing has so we can get a static mesh and then I want to set the material and we are going to simply change its material. So for the material, let's select eh, color green, uh, seems to be a good one. So now if we press play, and let's say we wanna spawn a couple of these on I. Now if we press O, it's gonna change the material for the last instance, like this. There we go. So we can change the material, but this is only going to work for the last thing that we spawned. Um, we can't really change the material of any other of these. So now let me show you a couple of ways how we could now get reference to a specific one that maybe is already spawned in the world or maybe if we spawned a bunch of these so that we can go back to one of the previous ones and change uh, some kind of a property in, in that blueprint. So. Now let's go back to our third person character. I have a very basic line trace by channel. I've already spoke about this in the previous videos. On keyboard key Q, I'm doing a line trace, 400 units in front of my character up until 1000 units. Now this is returning the information about the object that we have hit. And then if this is true, if the uh, return value of this boolean is true that means we have hit it and then we can set our actor and I'm gonna set this actor to be from the hit result it has to be the hit actor so the actor that gets hit by this line trace is going to get stored in the memory now to see the debug line so that we can actually see this line trace uh, change the draw debug type from none to for duration because by default it's going to be at none so now if we press Q you can see the red line and well it's gonna always start at red color unless you change uh, the color in the properties of the line trace by channel node and it's gonna be red and then once it hits it's going to create a red square so now if we would shoot it at our cube you can see it starts off red creates a red square and then continues on to be green and that means that it has connected with something and it, it has done the hit so now since it has hit our cube it's going to remember this specific instance so now we can press O and it's going to repaint well change the material on that one so if we would spawn now many of these 
If we press O, now it's going to remember the last one because we have set it up to remember the last thing that we spawned. But if we walk up to this, hit this, press O, there we go. You can see we are changing the material for that specific instance. Now, there are a few more ways how we could do this. So right now we have two possibilities. Whenever we spawn, we remember it. And we, whenever we hit it with the line trace, we also can remember it. Now, there are two more very common ways how to get references. And if we would go to our actor that we are trying to interact with, let's go to our event graph. I'm going to remove all of these nodes, but that's not important. What is important is that you select the mesh or whatever component it might be that you want to interact with and go to the very bottom. We have these custom events, which allows us to create on hit events and begin overlap events. So these two are going to be the two most common ones that you might be using in the future. So let's start with the on hit one. So if we would hit this plus sign, it's going to create this new event. And whenever something hits it, it's going to launch this event. But the thing is that by default, you must select your static mesh, scroll up until you get to the collisions tab. And you're going to see that the simulation generates hit events is false. This has to be true. Otherwise, the hit event will not be generated. Also, you got to make sure that the object that is about to hit this actor is getting blocked in the collision settings. In our case, we want to hit with the third person character. So whenever our third person character collides with this, uh, we want to generate this event. So we got to make sure that the pawn is getting blocked. Now, whenever we are going to hit this object, it's going to return us the other actor that has hit this specific actor. So what I'm going to do is simply cast to my character. So I'm going to cast to the third person character and make sure to use the other actor as the object reference. And now we can change any property in the third person character that we want. And we are going to set our actor variable. It should be at the very bottom. There it is, the actor variable. And now we can store this specific instance of the new blueprint inside of our third person character's memory. And to store this specific one, I'm just simply going to use a node called self. And the self node is going to return the reference of this uh, blueprint that I am in right now. So now if we would try this again, let's spawn a bunch of these. I'm not going to do any line tracing whatsoever. So now if I would run into this one, it generated a hit event and it's now remembering this specific instance. So if I press O, you can see we are changing the material as soon as we hit that instance. So let's hit this one. There we go. And we can also do the same thing with an already existing one. So that's basically it for the hit events. Now let me show you a overlap event. So let's go back to our new blueprint. Let's remove this on hit event. Let's select our static mesh. I'm going to disable the hit event. And instead, what I want to do is run our begin overlap event. There we go. It's a very similar node. It has the same properties that we need. It has an execution and the actor, other actor that has hit it. And in our case, again, this is going to be our third person character. But in order for this to work, we actually need to overlap this thing. So if we are blocking it, we can't really overlap it. We have got to get inside of this specific uh, mesh. So in the collision settings, I'm just simply going to overlap all. By default, usually the generate overlap events is true, but there are cases when it's going to be false. So make sure you always check that this is true so that it would generate the overlap events. And now, well, everything is going to work pretty much the same as it did uh, with the hit. So if we spawn a bunch of these, now we can walk inside of it, press O, and you can see it does remember that specific instance. There we go. So now we have only changed the material and the material changes happening on keyboard key O. Uh, but well, we can do this in many different ways. For example, if we would create a new custom event and let's call this change material. So we have change material. We can then provide an input for this event. And let's again, let's call this actor. So I'm going to call this actor, make this into a actor object type. There we go. And now if we move these nodes over here, and run this like so. There we go. Remove the execution. So now we need to launch our uh, change material event in order for us to change the material on that specific instance. So now whenever we press O, this isn't going to work. We need to launch this event instead. What we could do is on the keyboard key O, we could change the material, change material. 
but then we also need to provide the actual reference as well. So now this is going to work exactly the same way as it did before. And now since we have this change material, then in our new blueprint, what we can do instead is instead of setting the actual variable that is living inside of our third person character, we can run our event, which is called change material. So it would look something like this. Uh, but this case, well, we are not storing the actual reference in our character anymore. We are just simply passing this along to this function and casting. Uh, what we could also do is set our actor value then. So whenever we pass it along, we can set our actor value like this as well. Uh, but it really doesn't really matter. If you want to store this in the memory, you can store this in the memory. If you don't want to store this in the memory, well, you, you simply don't have to. You can just do it like this and it's going to work exactly the same way. So I believe we still have the, yes, we still have the overlap event. So now Whenever we overlap this, you can see it instantly is changing the material as soon as we overlap and we don't have to hit the O key to make it happen. There we go. So that's that's going to be pretty much it for today's video. Some very, very basic uh, interactions with the object. And uh, in the tomorrow's video, we're going to talk about blueprint interfaces and how they can actually save us a lot of time, save us a lot of code and well, how awesome they really are when it comes to interacting with different types of objects. So thank you for watching and I see you in the next one.